Act, uh, CL 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Board of Adjustment of the Township of Franklin has been provided. We will be called the call, please. Raymond Betterbid asked to be excused this evening. Laura Grauman? Here. Donald Johnson asked to be excused this evening. Bruce McCracken? Here. Alan Rich? Yes. Robert Shepard? Anthony Caldwell? Here. Gary Rosenthal? Here. Joel Reese? Yep. Cheryl Bagallo? Here. Chairman Thomas? Here. Minutes of the regular meeting, January 18th, 2018. We need a motion. I'll move. Second. Bruce McCracken? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Cheryl Bagallo? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Under resolutions, the uh, resolution for uh, board attorney. Uh, I need uh, both you and the attorney to sign that. I left it up there by you. That's the original that's up there by you. I'm going to take a big risk. I'm going to sign it before we have a vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a motion. Move it. And a second. Second. Okay. Laura Groundman? Yes. Bruce McCracken? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Joel Reese? Yes. Cheryl Bagallo? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Olson, ZBA 170024. I'll move. Second. Second. Alan Rich? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Joel Reese? Yes. Cheryl Vigallo? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Sciatta ZBA 170023. I'll move. Second. Alan Rich? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Joel Reese, yes. Cheryl Legallo, yes, and Chairman Thomas. Yes, Muslim Foundation Incorporated, ZBA 170012. Move it. Second. Laura Grauman? Yes. Bruce McCracken? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Dean Mercado, ZBA 170027. Move it. Second. 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 Okay. Bruce McCracken? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Cheryl Legallo? And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Franklin Greens, ZBA 170020. I'll move. Second. Bruce McCracken? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Cheryl Legallo? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes, and then Shaw, ZBA 170022. I'll move. Second. Bruce McCracken? Uh, yes. Anthony uh, Allen Rich? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Cheryl Legallo? And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Uh, before we move into the discussion part of the agenda, I just want to make uh, call attention to the first hearing, Surrender and Ronald Singe, ZBA 170020, hardship variance in which the applicant is seeking a variance due to his going 1,070 square feet over previously approved impervious coverage at 3 Buell Street, Somerset, Block 83, Lot 1.04 in the R20 zone. That's going to be carried until May 3rd, 2018, so, and no further notification needed. If you're here for that, we won't be hearing it. Uh, moving back, a step Muslim Foundation Incorporated, ZBA 170014. This is an extension of time. Mr. Thomas, I'd just like to say that Mr. Shepard is here. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Lamford appearing on behalf of the Muslim Foundation <coughs> in November, a resolution was adopted granting the Muslim Foundation a temporary use permit to use the rear portion of the property for, for parking for the High Holy Days. Uh, 
that temporary use permit is a six month permit pursuant to your ordinance. It expires in April. We're looking for a additional six month extension. Quite frankly, we probably don't need the six months, but we do need it into June. As you adopted the resolution tonight for the school, uh, we are pretty close to finalize everything so we can actually start construction on the project. And once construction starts on the project, we'll, we will be governed by that approval. But I would like the uh, temporary use permit so that we can ha use the facility, the parking facility, uh, for six months. Any questions? <coughs> Any comments? Uh, I keep confusing these. Can I just uh, all in favor, or we need a roll call? I, I move to approve the. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Laura Grauman, Bruce McCracken, yes. Alan Rich, yes. Anthony Caldwell, yes. Gary Rosenthal, yes. Chairman Thomas, yes. Okay, the business for this evening: Joe Petroleum, CBA 17. 0008 site plan with use and sign variances in which the applicant's proposing to construct a two-story mixed-use commercial building, 799 and 821 Hamilton Street, block 229, lots 5 through 9, and 10.01 in the Hamilton Business District. Carried from January 18th, and no uh, further notification is necessary. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Lamford appearing on behalf of the applicant. I just want to correct one thing in your opening statement. It is a one-story building, not a two-story two building. Uh, if your agenda says two stories, it's an error, but it is a one-story building. Um, <clears throat> this is an application for a site plan approval and a use variance. Uh, my client purchased the automobile uh, service station in 2008 and has been operating it as such uh, since that time. Um, in 2014, the lot adjacent to the service station uh, became available and my client acquired that lot. That lot was previously the subject of an application under the name of Mercado for a mixed-use building on Hamilton Street, which was never built. The application that we have this evening is to build on, basically on the vacant lot, a convenience store, uh, which, and also an additional 2,000 square feet of retail space, both of which are permitted uses in the zone and do not require a use variance. The gas station, uh, the fuel dispensing facility, uh, currently has four pumps on the site. Uh, the use variance is because we are looking to add two additional pumps to the gas station. So that's why we do need the use variance, because the zoning officer has determined that fuel dispensing facilities are not permitted uses in the HBD district. There are a couple of sign variances and a couple other bulk variances attended to it, which we will go through in the testimony. Uh, I do have three witnesses this evening. I have the, uh, the architect, Mr. Arjani. Uh, I do have my site engineer, and I also have a professional planner, Ms. Caffone, to testify as to the variances. Uh, this application, by the way, was submitted in April 2017. Uh, we have had numerous meetings with the staff to uh, revise the building uh, to change the site uh, to deal with some of the concerns that staff has has had. We also have submitted this application to the Hamilton Street Business District uh, with the original submissions. They did have some concerns. They have now reviewed it and they are satisfied with respect to the plan. And I think Mr. Dominak is here on behalf of the Hamilton Street Business District. I wonder if you're going to have I wonder if you're going to have somebody besides yourself testify on that. I'm, I'm just trying to lay it all out to make it simple for you, Mr. Right. Shepard. With that, I will call Mr. Arjani as my first witness.
could you raise your right hand? You sw solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give should be the truth to help you, God. I do. Can I have your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Jaswinder Arjani, J-A-S-B-I-N-D-E-R, last name A-R-J-A-N-I. Uh, I'm with Burton Engineering. Uh, the address is 66 Glen Avenue, Glenrock, New Jersey. Mr. Arjani, what is your occupation? Uh, I'm a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey. Can you briefly give the board the benefit of your educational and professional background? Yeah, I have a master's, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in architecture. Uh, I have been, I worked for 25 years as an architect. I've been licensed in New Jersey since 2009. And uh, I've been working on mostly uh, similar projects, retail and gasoline station. And we can accept his credentials. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Arjani, you were the lead individual with Burton supervising this application and also prepared the architectural plans, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and in submitting our application, uh, you were responsible for organizing with your staff the uh, site plans, stormwater calculations, sewer flow calculations, environmental impact statement, and traffic statement that were submitted as part of the application, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, tonight, you're going to rely on some exhibits. Yes. How many exhibits are we relying on? Uh, besides the plans that were submitted, I have three uh, three exhibits. Can we mark, mark them? them off? Yeah. yeah. The the first one is called landscape rendering, which is a com uh, which is a site plan and landscape combined, and all the text has been removed and is a colored uh, version. So just to make it clear and explain the the site, it's called. Uh, landscape rendering drawing number R1 uh, dated uh, today that's 3 1 2018 I'll mark this as a1 thank you <coughs> my uh, next exhibit would be R2 which is uh, a Colorized version of the building elevations, uh, the proposed canopy elevation, and the existing pictures of the existing canopy and the pre-standing sign. It's dated, uh, again, today, 3-1-2018. Three, three I'll call, label this as A2. Now, the, the third uh, exhibit uh, is for uh, our engineer, Mr. Shotino, but I'll just lay label this as A3? We, you can mark it as A3. And this is a vehicle circulation exhibit. Uh, it's number TK1 dated 3-1-2018. And it, it shows uh, the a car and a truck movement, and Mr. Shotino will explain this uh, when he testifies. Uh, I, this, I also have a survey which was submitted with the initial application. Why don't we mark well, it as A4? Yeah. Uh, now, this uh, survey was not prepared by our office. It's prepared by Amertech Emer Engineering, and it's called Boundary and Partial Topographic Survey. It's dated April 5, 2016. Okay, and that was, that was part of our plan submission? Correct. Okay. And let's stay with that exhibit very briefly. That basically shows what's there on the subject property at this time. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And very briefly, can you go through what's on the properties that are the subject of this application today? Sure. Uh, the, the top, in this case, the top of the sheet is the north and the uh, south is at the bottom, east and west. So on the, the eastern part of the lot, which is the existing gasoline station, uh, forms lots five to uh, lot nine, and there are four lots which are combined as 10.01, which is uh, vacant right now where the house used to be, which has been demolished. Uh, the site is approximately half an acre, uh, <coughs> and uh, the frontage on Hamilton Street is 225 feet, and uh, towards Shevchenko, it is uh, uh, 100, 100 foot depth. There are... Uh, I, I don't know if you can see from there, but the existing canopy is, uh, which is also, uh, I'll also refer to exhibit one for the existing canopy because it's clearer there. 
the the canopy which uh, uh, in this uh, on exhibit A1, the brown is the proposed building, and and uh, the existing canopy is shown in this uh, dark yellow color. So the canopy is uh, 2,308 square foot and has four existing dispensers. Uh, there is a kiosk. Uh, there is a a small building which is 138 square feet which is being used as a store and there is a shed which is to the northeast of the canopy which is for storage which is 113 square feet. There are a couple of uh, fenced enclosures, one for propane and uh, uh, trash and of course there's a freestanding sign at the intersection and uh, uh, some area lights. So that's existing uh, improvements on the site at this time. Okay. Can you go to the exhibit now uh, showing the building that we are proposing to, well, first of all, wh what's around our property, this yeah, adjoining uh, properties? Hamilton Street is uh, mainly commercial in this section, a little bit of mixed use. Uh, immediately to our west is uh, a residential property. To across Shevchenko toward the, towards the east is again another residential lot. Uh, across uh, Hamilton Street to the west is uh, a, a mixed use, uh, uh, commercial building and to the north is uh, choir station three uh, on the east side and then a few, uh, I think three residential properties towards the west on the north side. Okay, so abutting the gas station and behind the gas station, if you're looking at it from Hamilton Street, is the, the fire station has a building there. That there are no residences behind the current uh, fuel dispensing area, is that correct? Uh, for most part, the existing uh, proper gas station is roughly to this point and the fire station stops here. And I would say a, a small part of the first residence uh, would be behind the gas station. Okay. Can you briefly describe to the board what we are proposing as part of this application? Yeah. So uh, we are uh, proposing to keep the existing canopy, remove the can we, the little store building that is under the uh, north side of the canopy and the shed and uh, the canopy would uh, they would uh, we are proposing to add two new dispensers at the it, uh, last row of columns and a kiosk uh, now with this proposal i will also refer to the uh, rendering which is exhibit a2 uh, i can dis describe the architecture later but while talking about the canopy uh, the, the bottom left side is uh, the proposed canopy fascia and the picture to the center is showing what is existing there. So as a part of this proposal, we are, uh, this, this uh, resulted from discussion with your staff. We are pro proposing to remove the bullnose, which is a, a, a BP uh, element just to make it more uh, traditional and fit into the uh, the streetscape that uh, the town has, they, they're looking for. So we'll remove the bullnose, make it uh, white with add some trims, which is uh, shown on the illustration at the bottom left side. Of course, we'll keep the, the logo, the BP logo, just to identify the brand, but tone down the canopy to, to make it more, uh, I would say, more traditional. And the columns, again, uh, we're taking the bottom part of the column and adding brick to that just to match the proposed building, which I'll describe a little later. So that, that white trims and the brick carries on from the building onto the canopy. Okay, so Be uh, before you leave the canopy, very yeah. quickly, sh uh, can you indicate to the board where the six pumps are going to be under the canopy? Yeah. The, the canopy is, there are six columns. Uh, there are three rows of columns. There are two existing dispensers on the west side. There's two dispensers in the center island. And there are two proposed at the north. Uh, uh, so so the, new two, the two new pumps are to the north Correct. side of the property. Yeah, where the store building is being removed. Okay. And the four, can, the four pumps that are there now will remain in their current location for reference for the for the board. That's correct. Okay. Are, the, are we doing anything else to the area where the fuel is being dispensed? Uh, n no, the, the lighting will remain the same. No, we're not proposing anything else. Okay. Can you then take us to the building? Be before we go there, can I ask a, a question? Yes, sir. Um, 
you said that they're they're taking down sort of like there's a like a, a mini store as yes. part of this thing, but they're putting up a kiosk. Yes, yeah. kiosk is for the transaction at that. Uh, so, in other words, the only thing that's going to be in the kiosk is the cash register and and that and and the financial aspect of this gas station. It's not going to have. I guess all the cigarettes and the food and everything else is going to be in the little store. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, it's a shelter for the employees and, uh, like you just said, the yeah. transaction and the electrical panel for the set. Okay. Take us to the building. Uh, the the proposed building is 5,000 square feet. It's one story. It, it covers, uh, with the canopy, the building coverage is 32%, uh, uh, where ordinance allows 50%. The height, as I mentioned, is one story. Uh, Wait a minute. Go back a second. With the, so when you're counting the percentages, it's the building and the canopy? Is that what you were I just to? mentioned that the building and the, no, the plan just mentions the building, okay, the cover but, sheet. But, but the 32% that you're talking about, is that the Building or the building and building the building and the canopy. Okay. If you were to consider both the street. Uh, the again, I'll I'll uh, reference to the. It, before I go to the elevations, the uh, the store is uh, the building is designed to face Shevchenko as well as Hamilton Street. There, are the dark triangles are the doors uh, into the the building. There's a little overhang facing the canopy and two overhangs facing Hamilton Street shown in yellow is the, are the roof overhangs. Uh, to the north of the building uh, would be the condenser pads. Uh, again, I'll get into that a little later, but the air conditioning units are inside and the condenser pads would be outside. Uh, and to the northeast corner of the building, there is an enclosure for recycling and dumpster. So that the... Um so that the condenser pads and the uh, uh, garbage and recycling area that would face the back of the um, uh, the back of the fire station, or would that be facing the back of a residence? It'll be towards the residence. The trash enclosure is facing uh, the the gas station side, but yes, it is towards the residence. Towards the residence Correct. and the. Well, where is the where's the fire station in, the in fire comparison? Uh, oh, okay, the, the fire station's over that way. Yes, yes. All right. And these, there are, I think, these are three residences. Yeah. One, two, three. Where's yeah. The, where's the parking? The parking where's is the parking for the building. The uh, parking is right in front of the building, and there are two more spots in the northeast corner. But there are also uh, some services we are providing air vacuum and electric car charging uh, and this for how many a, spaces there are two spots there two spots yeah so all together there are 11 uh, on the property and and there of course uh, these pumps there's there are six pumps so the 12 cars that would be here with some of which may go into the store and use that space as parking as well for a short term now going back to the building it's a 5,000 square foot building. In fact, the floor plan is part of the set. I don't have it on the board. Uh, and it is a typical convenience store. It will have two. Uh, it's the east side, which is facing the gas station. It's approximately 3,000 square feet. And the uh, west side uh, is uh, for a future tenant. We don't have a tenant yet. It's approximately 2,000 square feet. So convenience store is a traditional uh, com convenience store, which you see around it. It has uh, prepackaged food, uh, hot dog, uh, coffee, uh, bottled drinks, refrigerators, walk-in coolers, islands, things like that. Do you have a tenant for that? For the convenience store, yeah. would be run by the owner, applicant. Okay, so it won't be a franchise no. thing. It'll be just be run by the applicant. By the applicant, Okay. Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, the, the top left here shows the elevation that is facing uh, Shevchenko Avenue and the canopy. And the top right is the elevation facing uh, Hamilton Street. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the town ordinance requires that the building is closer to the street. So uh, it's zero to 10 feet. So towards Hamilton Street, of course, we have brought it uh, very close to the property line. The 
roof overhang is actually zero setback, and towards Shevchenko is setback. It's a deviation from the ordinance, but th that's uh, uh, because it's a gas station. There's a canopy in front of that. Now, before you go on to describe the building, you you are familiar with the zoning ordinance of Franklin Township, correct? And you reviewed it in preparing the plans. Yes, I did. And, and in the Hamilton Street Business District, there are certain design standards that are part of the ordinance. Is that correct? That's correct. And you are familiar with those design standards? Yes. And as best as possible, if not in its entirety, you tried to incorporate all of those design standards in the building that we are proposing to the board this evening? That's correct. Okay. Can you indicate to the board uh, the materials that we intend to use for yeah. the building? Yeah, uh, I will point out the drawing. I have samples of the siding and the brick, if you like to see. But the bottom three-foot course uh, proposed is a dark brown brick. And above that, there's a sill, white sill all across. And uh, above the brick course would be tan-colored siding. It's hardy plank. It's cement board siding, not the plastic one. And there's a two-foot of uh, trim work all around. And all of this is part of your... Uh, architectural design guidelines in, in section 112-203. Uh, there's a uh, there's an ornate cornice with, with moldings and then of course the entrances on both the streets are highlighted with dormers and the entrances are again highlighted with columns and pediments and, and the sign is placed above the door so it kind of indicates where the person is supposed to enter the building. Uh, and the roof is shingle roof. Uh, it's uh, charcoal gray color, uh, almost black. And there's a cupola proposed uh, on top uh, just for decorative elements. Now, the standards do require that the roof slope be 8 in 12. And we have uh, 8 in 12 in one direction, but in the other direction, we have 5 in 12, which is less than 8 in 12. And the reason we did that was uh, it's a very square building. And if we kept the same slope on both sides, it would be, uh, they, you won't have a flat ridge. And in my opinion, the appearance is better when you have a slope and a flat. Otherwise, it would just go up much higher and it would be like a pointed pyramidical roof. Uh, uh, besides that, uh, the windows themselves, they're tall windows and these uh, ordinance, this section of the ordinance requires that the 50% of the walls be glass. And we tried to, add as much glass as possible to the sites that face the street. But one of the requirements is that we provide shutters and, and it really, they don't go with this type of uh, window and window height. So we have, that's another deviation from the standards. Uh, lastly, uh, can you go over the signage that we are proposing? Uh, referring to exhibit A2, the bottom right is the freestanding sign. That's an existing sign and no change is being proposed to that because it already has a shop uh, addressing that small store that is on the property. So we don't need to make any change. Is that a conforming sign? Do you know? It probably doesn't conform, uh, but it's a pre-existing condition. Know, yeah. just Actually, freestanding yeah. free signs are not permitted, so it's, yeah. it's, it's a non with, with the With the new HBD, and I think the freestanding sign is not permitted at all in that zone. When it was built, I'm sure it was permitted because gas stations way back when were permitted all along Hamilton Street. Okay. okay. And uh, at, it, at its base, it has existing landscaping. In fact, when in discussion with your staff, we were discussing how to dress this up and I think we all agreed that leaving the existing landscaping was the best way to leave it. So we are not proposing any change to the sign or the landscape underneath the sign. Uh, the ca canopy has uh, three log these uh, sun logos on three side BP, and of course the bullnose is part of the image right now. As a part of the proposal, we have agreed to remove the, this also resulted from a discussion with your staff. We are removing the green bullnose, uh, removing that imaging part, but maintaining just the three sun logos. Besides the these uh, on the building, we are proposing three signs. Uh, the, the the for the convenience store, there are two signs. These are again a standard BP uh, imaging 
uh, one facing the canopy, one facing the street. They, these are both 55 square feet. They are more than what the ordinance allows. Ordin ordinance allows 24 square feet. These are both 55. And then for the second tenant, because we don't have a tenant, we don't have exact sign, but we are asking for approval of 30 square feet. And, and we just show here a tenant sign uh, that would go up there. They're all placed within the dormers created for sign and highlighting the entrances. Okay. And in, in your opinion, if we were to reduce the size of those signs uh, to what is in conformance with the ordinance aesthetically and, and in relationship to the building, do you have an opinion as to whether those signs would be more attractive or less attractive if they were made smaller? Uh, uh, they would be less visible, I think. The, 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 the sign is very small portion of the, the wall. It's about 3%, three, 3 percent, three point, under 4% uh, facing um, Shevchenko. And, and these two signs together is close to 6 six or 7%. So it's in proportion with the face building wall area. Um, you've had an opportunity to review Mr. Healy's report where he identified all of the signs that we are proposing and the variances that we are seeking in conjunction with with those signs, is that correct? Yes. Okay, I'm and sure. Mr. Healy is accurate. I mean, he's he, he went through all of those. And there's one vertical dimension sign that we were like oh, yeah. one inch over. Yeah. And, yep. and we will eliminate that correct. one inch variance. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll make that change. See if I just go through. What does it What does it mean when it says <coughs> there's supposed to be driveway spacing 50 feet minimum and 37.5 feet existing slash proposed? What does that refer to? These are the spacing between the two driveways. Oh, between the two driveways. Correct. Yeah, the engineer will get into the driveways, but just. Yes. Again, you're familiar with the site. There are currently three driveways correct. that access the property. Is that correct? Two on Hamilton Street and one on correct. Shevchenko. Yeah, the two on Hamilton are shown here, and the one on Shevchenko is, uh, they're all pre-movement driveways, and they're existing. And, and we're not proposing any changes to those driveways. Is that correct? Besides the streetscape, no, no other change. The driveways are, and of course, with the, because uh, Hamilton is a county road, we would have to go to the county. Okay. But, but at this time, we are not change, proposing to change those. And as a matter of fact, with respect to the vacant lot, there is currently an existing curb cut and driveway to the vacant lot, lot, which we would be eliminating and creating an additional parking space on Hamilton Street. That's correct. Okay. I think we hit your uh, architectural comments, Mr. Healy. Did I miss anything on those? Um, no, I think you've addressed Thank uh, you. each of those comments. Good. I know you. Right. Then I have no further questions of this witness. Any board questions? I would like to make sure the, the two new pumps you're talking about, they're for gasoline and not diesel, correct? Uh, there is, uh, there would be car diesel here, but no truck fueling if that's what you, no high speed diesel. So there will be diesel? Yeah. That's what they're proposing. But you're putting a different nozzle on, right? It'll be, uh, it, this. the dispensers would be four product dispensers for uh, the three gasoline grades and a diesel. But it'll be low speed, uh, which is meant for cars. For for trucks, which have very large capacity tanks, you can't, trail. even the nozzle size is different. So you need high-speed dispensers, and we're not planning to install high-speed dispensers here. That's not the plan. And could you say just a little bit about the, um, what is it, the uh, electric car charging? Yes. Um, are, are they going to charge from both of those spots? Or? I mean, th these two spots are available. The charger does have two ports. Uh, if yeah. they do, if two cars come, they can charge there. Yes. So they just back it in, or, or it doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah. Which, whether they go forward or back, as long as it reaches. Huh? Uh, yeah. And are they hard char high charging, or I mean, uh, the, they they the charge. I mean, they're usually standing from five to fifteen minutes. These cars, 
And I don't know if they charge it you completely should. there. I, I have no idea. But typically, based on what my experience at other locations is, that it's 15 minutes at the max they, yeah. they, they stay there. And, and is there a charge for that? Uh, yes. I have a question. Uh, after the last hurricane, <laughs> we had discussed either at the planning board level or here or both the idea that uh, new applicant service stations would be required to uh, be able to provide service in the event of a power failure. Did we formalize that, or is that just a recommendation? No, I know the one on Veronica and Hamilton is supposed to be. I remember the discussion as, as um, being a condition of the board's use variance for that approval. I, I frankly don't recall it there being a discussion for it being an <coughs> ordinance requirement, but the planning board is working on a uh, new master plan amendment and then the zoning ordinances that will follow. So we can certainly, I'd suggest you bring it up in that context and we can talk about it at the planning board. Will this one have the ability to have a generator to, ge to pump gas in the event of a, po a power? We can provide a transfer switch and uh, if in event of power failure, we can rent a generator for that time, yes. Or asking for a few variances. No, so we, we, we will provide if that's what well, the board see, wants. Well, see, here's what the problem yes, is. Sir. At the time of these crises that occur, you're not going to be able to find a generator to plug into your system because everybody else is going to want that same generator. What we're asking you to do or asking your client to do is to install a permanent generator like the one at my house in case there's a problem that this system will be able to work without having to go find a generator to complete the process. Uh, I can ask him that, but typically the uh, client... Well, why don't we do that? Yeah, so he, he has a number of locations, uh, and if we have transfer switches everywhere and not power goes away everywhere, so if he has a few generators which he can move around where it's required, but let me... I, I just, yeah. if, I, if I can communicate what my client indicated, he, and he owns probably about 60 gas stations, he says this, if there is an emergency, this, if you have the switch for a generator, the state of New Jersey will provide that generator if there is an emergency and will bring them to the site so that there is gas available to the residents. So there is a way to get a generator to the site. All right, that's a better answer. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, just one question on the, um, the size of the building mounted sign. Um, just because of the degree of the variance, the, the, the secondary sign for the convenience store based on the linear, you know, the size of the, the, the uh, frontage, um, it's limited to 24 square feet and you're proposing 55. Can you just just address the degree to which it's, I mean, it's more than double. Can you just explain the, the rationale for that and, and relate it to the architectural that you have and how it fits the building? Yeah, um, I mean, the picture here uh, kind of explains the proportion and this, the sign is a, as a standard BP sign which we are using here. Can it be made smaller? Uh, it could be, we'll have to check with them, but we did have discussions with them based on our previous discussions. Um, but can you, can you point, uh, point the sign out to the yeah, board? And yeah. that's, the, that's the sign, so. This is the, the site facing Ham Hamilton Street, yes. Okay, so I just wanted the board to understand that that, that, that side uh, that the architect was pointing to, that is the side that's facing Hamilton Street. That's, you know, that's the, um, you know, um, that's the side that has the zero setback as the ordinance requires. So um, the issue with, with there the one entrance. is not uh, visibility. It's really a question of whether or not uh, it's proportional or... I, I would agree. I mean, the setback is zero feet, so I can't imagine visibility is really the problem. I would think it's, in my opinion, I think it's really the board's <coughs> decision if you feel that that is better in terms of the scale of the sign in relation to the you know size and architecture of the building. For reference, the sign on the left is 30 square feet. The sign, uh, the sign on the on the on the building uh, the picture on that's on the left. No. The sign no, on the, on the, the, the right this, right. Oh, okay. This, All right. The, the, probably the the letter sizes would be similar, but of course the oval makes it right. Uh, now, how big is the sign on the building on the the side on the left, the side that faces 
the the gas station. They're both the same size. Both fifty five. Correct. Both fifty five. The one that's f that faces uh, the side street doesn't require variance because it's a function of the um, the linear feet of the side of the building. Uh -huh. So since that's a longer building, that actually complies. The other one, it has a shorter, you know, frontage or facade. So technically, that's limited to 24 square feet. Plus, it's the secondary sign, so I think there's a diff slightly different standard. Now, the lettering on both is the same, and what makes the, the one sign larger is the, the oval, or? Yeah, approximately, I'm saying. I have not measured this, but if, if you compare the two, of course, the oval, if you see this is, I can scale it if you want, but the shop itself may be as wide as tenants, I know even little less the height, but the o it is within an oval. So when you measure the sign, you measure from out to out and top to bottom and a rectangle. Uh, so it does add up to 55 square feet. What would happen if the two signs were the same, 30 square feet? We, we can check that uh, with, the, with the brand because branding what company you, what if they you have you a do, smaller you sign. You would then have a symmetry. What branding company? Uh, the BP, I mean. The but how can BP have anything to do with what the sign looks like on the building? No, it's not going to be a BP sign. No, these are BP standard signs. These are from BP, the shop. Oh, they're going to say something about BP on them? No, they would. They, this is exactly what it will be. Uh, if you see BP uh, stores uh, across the state, they th this is what they say. When they're BP stores, they say shop. Okay, let's go back then a little bit. I thought you told me that this was going to be not going to be a franchise store, that this was going to be a store run by the client who would be putting his own name on the store. Is that correct? No, uh, that, that's correct. It's run by the uh, applicant. Uh, but this, the, for example, Mobile has Mobile Mart. They, they give their name. Sometimes even 7-Eleven gives their name to the gas 7-Eleven, but that doesn't mean it's 7-Eleven. So uh, uh, Tiger Mart, they're, uh, it's name given by Exxon, but the stores are run by the app, the owners of the prop of the business so it's similar this uh, it the shop is a bp sign which is given to a business owner for all, all sites that have bp gasoline uh, and the owner can choose to use shop or can put some other brand on the store so instead of putting a generic food mart or something they usually like to, and in this case, our applicant has chosen to use, but tomorrow, if he w wants to change the brand, BB would not have a problem with the store changing the brand. Can you uh, make that sign? Smaller? Huh? We could. Uh, I mean, if, if the issue we, really we could is make it visibility, because yeah. <laughs> most times when, when the issue of, of signage is your concerns that something is far from the, my way, you want to make sure that people see it. It's a safety thing. Yeah, I, w what I think I think probably makes sense. If the if the generic sign for the other store is thirty square feet, we can make that one thirty square feet. So they're symmetrical. Uh, obviously, the sign on the side facing the gas, the pumps is larger, and that's permitted. And and also, to be fair, there are there is an existing freestanding sign that identifies the site too. So I I think if we make the two signs on Hamilton Street, 30 feet, uh, you know, I think that probably makes the most sense. And, and for the record, 30 square feet, that, that's basically the standard throughout the town for this type of situation. You know, the pizza shop and the nail place and the convenience that that 30 square feet is the standard. Okay, other questions? I'm sorry, I have to get back to the diesel. If you're going to you're going to advertise diesel on a freestanding sign, correct? The price of it. Yes. Okay. So, what's to stop a big truck from seeing the diesel gas and wanting to get in there? What's to stop a big truck from doing that? How is he going to know it's just for cars? I mean, you, usually, big 
trucks, no. Uh, where they fuel, like a, a, a big truck would not go pull into a gasoline station. They all, they are, you sometimes have accounts, they sometimes have uh, app, apps and websites and, and where they kind of tell each other uh, where let the price is low or I'm so, just curious because yeah. I don't think you have enough driveway space for a big truck to try and pull in there. No, it's not it. meant for truck. Uh, I know, but yeah, but would, wh we wh can wh why wouldn't you sign say cause only? We c can we ask the sign? I'll just ask. Yeah. Yeah, we can add signage uh, to uh, saying no fueling for trucks or tractor trailers or something like that. And we will, uh, with your, agree with, with your engineer and. Yeah. No, I think this point was how will he know? How will a truck know? And yeah. They, wait. yeah. No. So we, we'll add a sign. If I recall, with the, the other application that we had, wasn't there, and I heard somebody think mentioned something about the maybe the number of gallons per minute or something. Wasn't there something with the other application and they said it was only going to be the, I guess, the speed of gas that would yeah. accommodate cars? Yeah, yeah. Th that is, uh, I what, said. Why don't, why don't we have my client sworn in so he can explain at least <coughs> how, again, he, he knows more about gas station operations. Than and, and, that may, and that may feed into what the architect just testified Anything to, that you know, else truck drivers know where to go and not to go. That. Anything else for this witness? All right, there is no public, so we won't open to the public. All right. Now you can. Could you raise your right hand? Do you swear the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Could you give me your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Vikram Gill. Spell it, please. B I K R A M. Last name is Gill, G I L L. Mr. Gill, uh, this meeting is being recorded, so hold the microphone up closer to your mouth. Uh, you are one of the owners of the subject property, is that correct? Yes. And you're, you and your company own about 60 automobile service stations in the state of New Jersey? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and you heard the question on, uh, can you explain the difference between uh, the dispensers that you have on, at this gas station and other gas stations that, that service uh, larger vehicles as, as to the diesel? Yes. So uh, typically the diesel dispenser for trucks pumps about 100, ga 100 gallons a minute. And the, these dispensers, uh, they call it combination dispenser. So you are gonna have a diesel and a gasoline nozzle on the same dispenser. And typically they pump about six gallons a minute. And so there's a difference about, uh, you know, maybe 15 times less. So, and most of the big trucks, they know where to fill up. Typically they, they don't even want to come to our station because it's going to take two hours to fill up their truck. But they, it, are they able to know that physically without pulling in? That, oh yeah, yeah. The truck drivers typically, I mean, uh, uh, so like Jaswinder was saying, they have applications uh, or apps on the phones. Uh, they have separate service stations. Uh, a station like this, you don't see trucks. The, this. Uh, more and more people we are seeing that they are buying diesel cars and small vans, and this diesel dispenser is for those people. But if the board wants us to put a sign up uh, to indicate no. Yeah, we don't have any issue with that. Okay. Yeah. Any more testimony from him? I have no further questions at this Anything point. else from the board? Again, there's no public. Go ahead. Mr. Shortino. Would you raise your right hand? You swear the testimony you're about to give should be the truth to help you, God. I do. Uh, your name and address, please, spelling your name. First name is Brian, last name is Shortino, S-H-O-R-T-I-N-O. Mr. Shirt, oh, you didn't swear me. I did. Oh, you did, Mr. Shirtino. What is your occupation? 
I have an undergraduate degree in landscape architecture from Rutgers University, master's of science degree in civil engineering from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. I'm a licensed professional engineer, licensed professional planner, and licensed landscape architect in the state of New Jersey. I would offer the testimony of Mr. Shortino. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shortino, you, you, you worked uh, with uh, Mr. Arjani in preparing the plans that are subject to this application. Yes, I did. And again, you're familiar with the subject property uh, and have been to the site and are familiar with the existing conditions and the proposals that are before the board. Is that correct? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, again, just for the purpose of the board, how does the site operate for the gas station today? Well, I'll reference the, even though it's the proposed rendering, um, just specifically for the gas station, as, as we testified, as it's been testified by Mr. Johnny, uh, there's an existing canopy at the site. Uh, there's four dispensers. We're going to increase um, the dispenser count from four to six. Uh, all that activity with the improvements is going to happen at the island furthest away from Hamilton Street. But with respect to the gas uh, service at the site, there's, there's three driveways existing to remain on site. Um, so the, the, the gasoline station would more or less function as it presently does. It's full access and that there's two-way driveways. All, two, all three driveways will be maintained as two-way and the site will function as it currently does. But we do have uh, the introduction of the additional dispensers and that will add to the efficiency of the site. So um, if there's any stacking that occurs on the site now, um, that will be reduced because now we're, we're introducing the uh, additional dispensers. Okay. Uh, in the staff reports, uh, one of the concerns that was raised by the township engineer were, were issues of circulation. First of all, where are the tanks that are storing the fuel at the present time? The tanks are existing to remain, but they're at the easterly side um, of the canopy closest to, and I cannot pronounce this word, this Shave street name. Shevenko. Shevenko. That's close enough. And did you prepare an exhibit to show the ability of a vehicle that is coming to deliver fuel and their ability to enter and exit the site? Uh, yes, we did. And this that was the exhibit that was marked A4? Uh, A3 is what it, it's I'm sorry, noted A3. as in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. Um, yeah, there was there was two concerns. Um, one was the fuel delivery truck, and the other concern was whether the movement um, with the new pump islands or the new pump island and the two parking spaces where the charger and the vacuum and air pump would be, um, could they be accessed um, um, by, by the motor vehicle and the route for the, the fuel delivery truck. So with respect to the fuel delivery truck on this on this um, exhibit A3, this is an existing movement. There's really no change, but the truck makes a right into Shevenko, makes a left into the um, into the driveway on Shevenko. It more or less straddles the tanks, disperses the fuel, uh, continues between the first and second row of pump islands, and then exits the site on the um, Westerly driveway on Hamilton. All existing. That's all in existing condition. Um, with respect to the movement of a passenger vehicle, um, again, it was in the review letters that um, it was desirable to see some type of um, turning movement for that. So we've indicated a passenger car that could um, access the, which would be the worst case scenario because there's 90 degree parking for the. Um, for the charger and the uh, vacuum and air pump, um, but this exhibit safe, uh, shows that the, the fuel, um, a passenger vehicle can, can access that pump island without uh, causing any problems and um, with respect to getting gas and getting out of the site, um, which can get out on the Westley Driveway also on Hamilton Avenue. And it could work the other way also if, if it needs to. Okay. So. And, and getting back to the tanker, uh, when it exits the site, obviously, we have now introduced parking spaces adjacent to the store if there are customers that are going into the store. Uh, that, that tractor trailer will have no problem exiting the site, will not interfere with vehicles parked 
in the parking spaces next to the store. Is that correct? That's correct because, again, that's where the existing driveway is. The parking spaces are located uh, further west of the driveway alignment, so it's more or less the, sa the same existing condition. Okay. Now, you've had an opportunity to sit down and review the uh, engineering report and the planning reports that were generated in conjunction with this application. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and there were some things that we need to discuss. Generally, we can comply with about 95% of everything that has been requested in the reports. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, one of the issues, and I'm going to go right to the engineer's report, is the uh, location. It's on page three of the report, item number five, the trash enclosure. Can you describe to the board uh, where the trash enclosure is and uh, the, the comment uh, that was raised by Mr. Zelnick as, about the possibility of relocating that dumpster? Yes, we, 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 we indicated the trash enclosure and the recycling enclosure. Uh, that's on the northerly side of the building, um, near the front of the building. It, it would have a wall enclosure on the, I'll say, the side closest to the residence and the westerly side um, furthest away for some, from Shevenko. And Then it would have two um, gate enclosures in front of it. So access to those, uh, so access to those enclosures would be from the gas station side of the enclosures. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And there's no parking spaces in front of those enclosures. There, there is, is. There is one parking space. Oh. Okay. Well, there is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there is one parking space in front of the uh, enclosures, and we do have a striped aisle, uh, striped area uh, adjacent to that one parking space. So how's that going to work? Well, again, we believe it's going to work because the activity when these trash enclosure is um, accessed is usually in, in the early a.m. And this is actually the furthest spot away from the store. Past experience with convenience stores is the, at times the customer actually leaves his vehicle at the pump island while he's getting fuel, walks in, and combines that trip. Or when they do just access the, if it's going to be a longer type um, Activity in the convenience store, they would pull their cars forward. But again, these are all the primary spots. So we believe that that space in the a.m., in the early morning hours, would, would be um, available for the movement of the trash enclosure or the recycling, which is a 30-second to one-minute activity. So we believe it would, it would be um, easily accessible to do those two So there's two, there's two parking spots there or just one? There's just one. I mean, one another one kind of overlaps it, but I don't think uh, it's really just one because you do have the uh, cross-hatched area of an open space there. What does that mean? I don't understand what you've said that twice. I didn't get it. Cross-hatched area? Yeah. It's just it's just a it's really a no parking area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Mark didn't flag this as a variance because there's a trash enclosure already there. Um. I'm Looking on my phone right now, I, I believe I believe it might trigger a variance because I believe there's a, f a buffer requirement around the perimeter. There, so the fact that there's something in that buffer, I think that might trigger. Yeah, there, there. Yeah, we'll, and we'll get into the buffering next. But the trash enclosure is going to trigger a variance because it is within the buffer area. And we're before we get to that, the the trash enclosure is enclosed by a fence. Is that correct? Well, there's a fence along the entire, um, I'll say, rear, rear property line. And the trash enclosure itself, in addition to the fence, has a masonry wall on two sides of it. And the third side really is the building, which is the other side. Okay, so, so the, the trash enclosure is protected and screened by its own, its own masonry wall, and then there's a fence adjacent to the adjoining property owners. Is that correct? That's correct. So okay. it's kind of like doubly. Yeah, okay. So, so Buffer. what I would say is that it's not a roofed structure; it's a wall. So, if it wasn't, if there wasn't a separate buffer requirement, I don't think it needs a variance because it doesn't comply with the say accessory building setbacks. But again, I, I believe there's a buffer requirement with respect to that side, and the buffer is not supposed to have anything in it. Right. It's supposed to be plantings. So, I believe that would be the variance. Right. And, and again, two things. First of all, did we look when we got the report to see if there was any other place to relocate? 
that dumpster that made sense. We did look for other spots and we really couldn't find it. It's it's the it's the primary spot where where it should be. In, in my opinion, I don't think there's another location we can put this on the site. If we did put this anywhere else, it would actually I think be a worst case scenario. Yeah. Okay. In in addition. Uh, we looked at the comment concerning buffering along that property line. We're proposing a six foot high solid fence along the property line and no buffering. That's correct. I mean, we do have along the whole, I'll call it side property line, um, we do have the six foot high vinyl fence. Um, there's more or less a two foot setback from the curb line. Um, we don't really have the room available to provide that planted buffer on the building. Uh, we could provide the planting on the building side. We do have, uh, right now at this time, it, it's a coal, it, it's shown here as this green area. It's all lawns. So we could put a five-foot planted buffer uh, along the building side. We don't have a problem with that, and we can do that. Um, but we just can't physically fit it uh, in the gas station area. And, and the, the planting buffer, if we were to put a planting buffer on the gas station side, we would be buffering another non-residential building, is that correct? That's where the fire company is. For most of it, that's correct. For most of it, to approx that's probably two-thirds of it from Shevenko. So the only area where there are residences uh, w which are behind the building, we can put a buffer except where the dumpsters are. That's essentially correct, and that little bit of crosshatch, no parking area. Okay. I have a question. Uh, where do employees park as in part of the... 11 or 12 spaces or whatever. Is that, is that accounted for in our requirements? I mean, how many employees do you have that are going to drive there, and how many parking spaces will be left? Well, the, the park requirements include employee and customer parking, you know, in total. It doesn't differentiate between would, employees and, and Would it be customers. worth thinking then designating that spot mm -hmm. by the dumpster as an employee parking space, which would give you 100% control over it in case you got the timing wrong and the habit and they came and, you know, there was a car there. And we keep, maybe then keep the general public out of any possible conflict with a garbage truck. We, we, we can do that, Mr. Thomas. Some, sometimes what happens is, and I've had other situations, where you designated employee parking. It may be that none of our employees who come to work to this site drive. They, they may walk to the site or take either public transportation or bicycles. And then if you mark that as an employee parking spot, then you lose the parking spot because nobody drives to work. So I, we could do it either way, but there, there are pros and cons to it. I think that's a risk worth taking. Okay, that's fine. I'm just So that, can be, so that can be done. We can we can we can designate that one spot as employee only. Excuse me, employee only. And you're right. Now that the the operations can be controlled, and if deemed necessary for whatever, if the timing is not right, that employee can move the car if the trash uh, recycle is needed to access the enclosure area. Okay. Uh, one other comment. I think somewhere in our plans, we, we had a typo that referenced the hotel. We're not building a hotel on this site. No, that was in the um, um, <laughs> that was in the environmental impact report. It was just so a typo. We we will correct our environmental impact report to take the hotel off the property. Well, speaking of typos, you got two different street names. Where? Well, Chef yes and Chico no. Uh, if you across the street on the other side of Hamilton Street, that's actually Chester. Uh, it changes names at Hamilton. We will correct it to make sure all the plans say Shevenko. So did you agree to provide more landscaping, or what, what did you agree to? What we suggested, we can provide landscaping behind the building where our stormwater management is, and that's where the houses are. We can't provide it where the dumpster area is or where the parking area is, but that's also where the fire company is. It's not a residential. All right, so you're there. going to put something between the fence and the infiltration basin? Well, the infiltration basin is below grade, so. And you can plant on top of that. Yeah, you really can't do trees, but we can do shrubs. Okay, 
how tall would the shrubs be? Well, we can put something, it'll probably, we can put, um, I don't know if there's a, a requirement for the planted buffer area, probably as high as the fence, five or six feet. That's not, I mean, I think you'll work that out with the town. Um, I, I just don't <laughs> know what additional benefit it's really right have. to I a mean, six foot shrub. I think you could do a deer resistant arborvitae type thing back there. Um, and what about the other side of the building? Which side? This side? Yes. We just have lawn area shown there. And how wide is that? How wide is that rear area? Ten feet. Ten feet? Okay, ten feet. Do you think you could do deer-resistant arborvitae along the fence? Well, we do have the fence there. But we'd like to at least maintain a little bit of area just to be able to access the building. So we'll put something that's not going to be the full 10 feet. Right, they way. only get about five feet wide. Okay. You'll work that out with the yeah. Okay, it's been, it's been, it's been um, authorized by the, our applicants. All right, thank you. The uh, fence, I'd like to make sure whatever material it is is solid. It's not a vinyl fence with the slats through the. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's a solid fence. Yeah. It's not chain link with slats. Okay. I have a question that I mean, I mean, you may not be the right person to ask. Maybe I could, should have gotten asked the architect. But are they changing the size of that canopy at all? Or is that the original size of the canopy? Canopy size is not changing. Okay. So, so you'll be able to fit the other dispensaries under the same canopy? Yeah. Yeah. There, there was there's a small um, like convenient you know little shop there underneath the canopy that's coming out and then in its place is going to be the two extra pumps. Uh, very briefly, just describe how stormwater management is going to be handled so that the board has it. Yeah, basically when the site is um, upgraded and modernized, um, there's an increase in impervious area of approximately 5,000 square feet. And that's what the building is. The building is, is um, 5,000 square feet. So what we're, we're calling out is an infiltration basin to be located on this westerly side of the building. It's subsurface and all the roof drainage from the building will tie into that infiltration basin and it'll be discharged, allowed to percolate into the ground. So that's how we're treating the stormwater runoff uh, for the site. So there's no increase um, in stormwater runoff going into the street or going into any of the, uh, or the there's one drainage inlet located at the intersection. So that's how we're addressing stormwater runoff. And, and, the, and the current gas station at the present time has no stormwater management, is that correct? Has no stormwater management on site with any type of drainage structures. The canopy itself um, has internal downspouts, and I believe it ties into that um, inlet that's located at the intersection. Okay. Can you explain a little bit more what the the um, uh, the the the, uh, the place in the back of the um, uh, new building is going to? How's that going to work? The infiltration basin. Yeah. All it is 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 a subsurface structure. Um, these these I'll just. I'll, we have a detail on the plan, but they're more or less an oval-shaped type structure, and it has an open stone bottom. So the open stone, open structure has a volume in there, and again, as the roof drainage through through the leaders, it ties in subsurfacely. Those that volume can or volume of stormwater can be stored in there, and then it, it's allowed to percolate into the ground. Okay, so the 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 basin's going to be uh, like a cement. Um, Chamber. Well, it's not cement, and it's a stone bottom. It's 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 it's, it's a type of material. It's it's probably um, some type of, of plastic. I mean, we have the oh. detail on the plan, but um, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's essentially Fine. what it is. It's 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 the mo it's almost the standard what they use now for all the all these type of, of activities. Uh, it, the engineer, it, unless I'm misunderstanding, it, comment forty eight says that the uh, applicant should consider other means to reduce proposed runoff that the infiltration is uh, discouraged and therefore would negate the proposed means to address stormwater management. I'm not an engineer, so. 
Yeah, I believe. No, I believe I, what I think he he was saying is, it, it's discouraged if it's not clean water. In other words, if you have surface runoff coming from the pavements where oils drip, things like that, and you tie it into an infiltration basin, now you're bringing those those things subsurfacely. Well, have you squared that away with him? I mean, this is yep. a comment. That yeah, we, we're working out with him. But, yeah. but in essence, we are not taking any of the runoff from the gas station into that infiltration basin. It's all, it's all, it's all clean roof. water from the roof of the building. And that was his concern. But we'll resolve it with Mr. Zelnick. Well, where does the runoff from the gas station area go? As we mentioned, it, it, it presently goes out the driveways. It's all surface runoff except for the canopy. So the thing is, we're not really changing that per se, but um, the increase we're doing with the building is now that's being accounted for. So there's no change to the runoff, which more or less presently exists on the site. And the, the change that we are proposing is being uh, adequately handled in that infiltration basin. So th technically what, what that means is there's no increase in storm runoff going out into the street, going into the um, subsurface structures, utilities um, from the station. It's all being handled on site and allowed to infiltrate into the uh, groundwater. Um, Other than those comments. I have a, uh, Mr. Lefford, a question on site circulation. The, the main concern that I have is you have a gas station, which is, you know, a relatively traffic-intensive use, and a convenience store, which by its very nature has a lot of turnover, and putting them on one site um, and on a small site. And the main concern that I have is the, if there's any queuing for the gas pumps to the left of the canopy. This area? That if there's any queuing going that, how are people going to access the parking spaces, how are they going to back out of the parking spaces in front, in front of the convenience store? Can you explain or demonstrate that that's not going to basically create a kind of a gridlock on your site? Well, again, there's a couple of factors with respect to that. I can understand your concern. Um, for example, most normal gas stations, it's right turn in, right turn out. So I'm not saying, and I, you know, you couldn't make a left here, and if there's people in these islands, maybe you're still there. But you know, we are putting the additional dispensers in there. That's to, to improve the efficiency of how this site works. So um, the likelihood of that happen, it could happen. No doubt about it. That could possibly happen. All, all dispensers are filled, are being used. Somebody makes a left there, and he's undecided what to do. And at the same time, somebody may leave. But one thing about this is when you have 90-degree parking, you need 24 feet of backup area to be able to safely back up. So we actually have, um, I think the dimension was 39 to the pump island. Let me just double check. So we have 39 feet to the pump island space. So we do have a little bit of play to be able to do that. So um, again, I'm not disagreeing that could potentially happen, but we think it would be highly unlikely for that to happen. Um, and we mentioned, and the activities with the, with the convenience stores, again, also, um, a lot of times the patrons, when they're getting gas, they walk into the store and they'll leave the car while it's being fueled. If they have a little longer duration um, activity in the convenience store, they would use the spaces. But again, um, we feel there's a sufficient amount of room on this site that that potential um, Circumstance that you just mentioned would be highly unlikely, and we feel there is enough room there to be able to back up and continue on your way if you're exiting onto Hamilton, or even if you wanted to go all around and exit onto Shabenko. So yeah. I, just to ask the question, I'm not advocating for this, but just to explore p potential solutions. Would making a one-way flow work, uh, or would that create more problems if you were to make it one way, basically going from right to left? One-way flow through here? Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that would. I don't see how that would make any, many, of what, what, the, what, the, what that would do. I, I don't, I don't want to be a traffic yeah. consultant, more. But looking at that, then if I am going into the site, 
and want to go to the convenience store, then I got to drive through the pump area. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. With that driveway closest to the convenience store, it's easier for somebody going to the convenience store just to turn in and go to the convenience store. I think you'd probably create more of a problem doing that. Uh, kind of what I was thinking, but yeah. I wanted to make sure that we explored some. If you were, yeah, I agree. If you if you were just going to the convenience store, you wouldn't have to go into the pump island. You would you should make your right and go into the convenience store. So if you made this a one way, that that maneuver wouldn't be able to happen. I I, I mean I think you're downplaying the the amount of traffic, uh, and, and 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 the confusion of the cars go, going in, into these gas stations that that, that have a store also. Uh, I mean I, I I see what happens. As a lot of the others, Wawa, all, all the others, and they they have a bigger site, and they have parking all the way around the the site, and 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 some sometimes it's tough tough to, to get around, and you have cars that decide to go this way on the gas pump, or this way, that there's need a lot of room because there's there's a lot of confusion. Well, and again, I think we have provided that. That's what I that's what I mentioned in in my testimony. I believe we have sufficient amount of room between the um, fueling activity and the parking spaces in front of the convenience store. The two new dispensers, they're just for diesel? No, I believe we um, mentioned that they'd be uh, four products there, the three gas products and diesel. So the diesels are on the, the one, the diesel is on the north side? No. Th We have not decided that yet, uh, and only one dispenser will have diesel, not two dispensers. Uh, it will be gas and diesel combination. I'm thinking maybe on the southern side it might be it might might work best. So just to be clear, so only with those two new ones, right. only one would be diesel. Yes. Out of six dispensers, only one will have uh, only one will be diesel. And 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 I assume that the three gas products all come from 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 the same pump. You, you just press which one you want, right? Yeah, they call blend dispensers. So you have you have um, uh, regular and super, but you have three different types of grades. Right. Okay, Mr. Shortino, you also reviewed. Uh, some engineering questions or comments raised by M in Mr. Healy's report, such as identifying trees that are being removed. We're going to comply with all of all of his comments uh, concerning both the trees, the streetscape, to make sure it's fully compliant with the Hamilton Street Business District, and the plan that is before the board really does show uh, all of the changes to Hamilton Street that are required by the Hamilton Street Business District ordinance. Is that correct? Yes, we're, we're intending to comply with the requirements for the for the street streetscape, and um, we can we can talk to Mr. Healy and coordinate um, the requirements for the streetscape as recommended in his review letter. Yeah, I think my comments uh, would amount to tweaks, and and we'll sit down and resolve those tweaks. We we will comply with all of his comments. Uh, I have no further questions of this witness. Anything from the board? I have one more witness, Ms. Caffone. You swear the testimony you're about to give should be the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Name and address, please. Christine Ann Nazaro, N A Z Z A R O, Caffone, C O F as in Frank, O N E. Business address is 125 Half Mile Road, Suite 200, Red Bank, New Jersey, 07701. Ms. Caffone, what is your occupation? I am a licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey. I've been practicing for about 23 years as such. I've testified here in Franklin, but it's been a couple of years um, since I've been here. But I've testified before. The last time I counted was about 390 other boards throughout the state of New Jersey. So I've definitely testified uh, a fair okay. amount of times. Thank you. M Ms. Caffone, you're familiar with the zoning ordinance of the Township of Franklin, the master plan of the Franklin, of Franklin Township, and you've also reviewed the application that is before the board and also have visited the subject property and are familiar with the property. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And rather than ask you a million questions, can you briefly review the variances that we are seeking this evening and perhaps as you're going through them, 
opine on the, the your opinion as to whether those variances should or should not be granted. Sure, of course, Mr. Lamford. So we are here before the Zoning Board of Adjustment tonight. While the retail use that we're proposing is permitted, the gasoline station is no longer a permitted use in the HBD zone. So we require what's called a D2 use variance for an expansion of a non-conforming use. So a little different than another use variance, a D1 that comes before you, where we have to establish particular suitability and other proofs. Our proofs are a little bit less because we're an expansion of a non-conforming use. There's case law that says, presumptively, the area is already accustomed to having that use in it so the negative criteria can be viewed with a little bit greater liberality and we're encouraged to look at things like how we can better integrate this use with surroundings which your planner points out in his review letter that that's the statutory burden of proof so from a planning point of view I think that and the case law is clear that beautification can be um, satisfaction of the positive criteria, but there really should be something more than just aesthetics that's improving. And here in the particular case, I think Mr. Arjani did a great job of walking you through what we're doing to improve both the canopy area and integrate that with the architecture of the building. Um, in his original review letter, Mr. Healy had made some recommendations where we were missing the mark a little bit on the architectural standards. Our cupola was too small. Our windows weren't sized properly. He felt we could do a better job um, with the color scheme. And I think we've really tried to take those um, suggestions and try to integrate those into our plan so that we're better achieving the standards of the, arch of the architectural standards in the ordinance. But in the particular case, also, you heard testimony from our site engineer, Mr. Shortino, that we're actually improving the vehicle stacking on the site. So I think that we do have an aesthetic benefit in that we're improving the columns and we're tying them in with the brick to um, integrate with the proposed building but we're also improving the efficiency and circulation through the site how are you I see I, I I didn't catch that part when I was listening tonight how are you improving the the circulation and the stacking the stacking it's a really fair question is when we introduce the new pumps and we take out that little white brick building that's sort of where right now we have on the site where the retail is when we put the pumps there you actually give more space for people to stack for fueling that doesn't exist now so it actually creates more stacking opportunity on the property for those people who might be there looking to fuel for gas. Where right now, the circulation, if you had an opportunity to go out and look at it, doesn't really lend itself to that. So there's going to be more opportunity for vehicle stacking than exists on the property today, which in my opinion, from a planning point of view, would allow the board to rely on criteria H of the land use law, which talks about the free flow of traffic, but also criteria M of the land use law, which talks about a more efficient use of the land. Um, clearly, you know, the land use law and redevelopment favors improving those sites that are already disturbed as opposed to um, sprawling and disturbing new sites. So I think the board could rely on those two criteria. I think also the board can rely on criteria I here, a desirable visual environment. It's not always that we get to rely on that one when we're doing a fueling station um, with a retail convenience, and I, I do a fair amount of work for the retail fuel industry, but I think here, um, you know, through the help of, of Mr. Healy and the fact that your ordinance guides us to do that, but I think we did do a very nice job of in incorporating some nice architecture um, to the site, which is important because it is in the HBD district. So that's the D2 use variance. I'll talk about the negative criteria more globally, if that's okay, because I think all the variances sort of blend together. But I certainly think we meet our statutory burden of proof um, for the grant of the D2 expansion of a nonconforming use. We certainly advance certain purposes of the municipal land use law, and we're leaving the site more efficient and architecturally um, more compatible with the area. We're asking also for um, parking variants where 21 spaces are required, 11 are proposed. Um, that does not allow us to account for the stack or the um, spaces at the pumps. And we are actually, we were, we're, uh, were we asking for that or we're not asking well, for it? There's a mechanism in the ordinance that allows us to sort of pay our way out of that, if you yeah, will. And Mr. Haley pointed it out in his, his report. Did. Under your ordinance, and you've had other applications on, ha on Hamilton Street, we are not required to provide any parking for commercial. We can pay for the parking in lieu of putting the parking spaces in. So to the extent that we are deficient, we will make the contribution to the municipality for the parking spaces that are deficient. However, there's one little catch to this. The question is how many parking spaces are we deficient? Lots. No. 
No? Well, no, we're no. also creating one additional space yeah. on the Let street me. where one doesn't exist today. Yeah. So. The, the bottom line is, and Mr. Healy is absolutely correct, we are required to have 15 parking spaces for the store stores. And we have 11. So we are deficient four spaces there, which we would have to pay for pursuant to the ordinance. Then the question is, how many parking spaces are we required to have for the fueling station? Now, your ordinance doesn't deal with a service station that just provides for gas because your ordinance is one of the few ordinances that defines a gas station as an automobile service station which requires not only gas but service and therefore has a parking requirement of one space per pump. And and I don't think that ordinance necessarily applies because that ordinance envisions cars being left on the site to be serviced and that's why you need extra spaces. I've discussed this matter with, with Mr. Healy and that is the closest he can come to, to a parking number. He used the automobile service station as a criteria. I respectfully think that the number for the uh, Automobile ser service station should be really down to the number of employees, which would be two at any one time at the gas station. You don't have six employees working the automobile service station to fuel six pumps. So I would think that the deficiency that we have in the variance, it's not even a variance, we would pay for the number of parking spaces should be 17 parking spaces, not 21 as Mr. Healy has in his report and we are willing to make that payment. So you would then pay for six? Correct. We would pay for six. We are deficient four for the convenience store and two, at least in my opinion, for the uh, fueling station. Is it going to be a handicapped sp spot? Yeah, that's required. Yeah. Right. Let me point it out to you. It's closest to the access, referring to A1 in evidence. If you can see, it's the fourth spot down from the north or the rear portion of the site, but it's labeled on the site plan. So we're also asking for an impervious coverage variance. When the plan originally came into the township, we were not asking for that variance, but through some dialogue back and forth with your workshop committee, it was suggested that we have a, um, a parking space for um, vehicle charging for electronic vehicles. So we're going to provide that, but it required us to have a little bit more impervious coverage to do that. So I think it is clearly a better zoning alternative and creates a benefit to the public to have that charging station on site. We are also asking for um, parking within the required front, front yard setback and parking and the front yard setback of the building to Shevanko. Again, if you look at A1 in evidence, you can see that our building clearly is close to Hamilton Street as the HBD zone um, requires, but with the canopy and the existing conditions on the property, there's just no way for us to bring the building closer to Shevanko since we are taking advantage of the existing canopy, we're not removing it, it's really just a practical difficulty given the improvements on the site today. So I think that the, the C1 cri uh, criteria, which talk about lawful pre-existing structures, can be applicable to that variance because they exist on the property today. So that's an existing condition, um, it's really not being exacerbated by this application, it, it just exists there today. Um, and then we are asking for the variances for the building sign. We went back and forth on this in our prep meeting as well. One of the things that I asked Mr. Arjani to calculate was the percentage of the wall areas, understanding that we were asking for some signage relief and I think we have agreed to reduce those down. But personally, I, I thought that they were justifiable. I think the original, um, the original size that we asked, but we can certainly reduce them if that's the board's pleasure. Referring to A2 in evidence, you know, as a planner, we're trained that signs do a number of things. Certainly they want to direct the motoring public to our property. We want people to get on the site safely and efficiently. But they also do a number of things. They advertise. This is the HB HBD zone. We want our businesses to be su successful here and have advertising. But then they also have an architectural component to them. So when we had our meeting the other day, I asked Mr. Arjani, well, what percentage of the wall area? Because that usually gives us a pretty good perspective of scale and how they relate to the building. So as they were proposed, they were about 6.8% of that wall area. So not a, not a very large percentage of the wall area. But of course, if it's the board's pleasure, our client has already agreed to reduce them. I'm sure we can be happy to do that and accommodate you if you feel that they're a little bit too big. But again, I thought from a planning point of view, 
I liked them originally. I think that they sit, they sit well on the peaks and they look architecturally in scale with the building, but if the board doesn't agree with me, I'm sure my client would be more than happy to reduce them. Um, we're also asking for the height of the building mounted sign where 14 feet is, per is permissible, we're at 18 and a half. And that just is really a function of the architecture of the building. Um, the ordinance requires certain percentages of windows, so it's hard for us to give you those nicer, taller windows, but then have our sign lower to the ground. So in order to give you the architecturally nicer windows, our sign has to be a little bit higher, which you can clearly see from A2. So I do think our sign package um, is in scale to the, to the building, to the area. The stated purpose of the HBD district is to provide for commercial uses with, um, to contribute to an attractive, vibrant, and sustainable business district that is geared towards pedestrian circulation, bicycle circulation, and public transportation. So I think taken together, holistically, our, our proposal does that. We're introducing a retail commercial use that is permitted in the HBD district, and the expansion of the non-conforming use can looked at as bettering the site both more efficiently and um, architecturally. So I think that as far as the negative criteria, the land use law does not ask you to hold us or any other applicant to the standard that there be no detriment. Just that the, the detriments are outweighed by the benefits of the grant to the deviation. And here, clearly putting this in the HBD district and having looked at this area in your master plan as an area that the township wants to revitalize, I think that this is a great application. Yes, we need some variance relief, but it's a balancing act and it gives you the opportunity to sort of implement some revitalization into this area with some some, you know, some reasonable variance relief. So I think we certainly meet our statutory burden of proof for the grant of the D2 variance. The positive and negative criteria are satisfied, as well as the case law for the, um, for the bulk variances, which can be looked at as either C1 hardship for the existing structures and the setbacks, or again, with the impervious coverage in the absence of any hardship, you can grant that as a C2, because it's a better zoning alternative to have that charging station. Thank you, I have no further questions. Hey, I uh, was about to ask if our township economic director wanted to weigh in on this. I see he's jumping at the chance. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to speak because, well, first of all, I'm Vince Dominic. I'm the economic development director for the township. And in this respect, I'm talking as the executive director yeah. of the Hamilton Street Advisory Board. As Mr. Shepard pointed out, he wanted to hear someone besides Mr. Lanford opine on the review by the, the Hamilton Street Board. The Hamilton Street Board as a whole reviewed the project, was satisfied with the concept. They then sent it to, they have a zoning review committee. That zoning re review committee reviewed the original submittal. We had some comments. We met with the applicant. We thanked the applicant for willing to work with us. It's been very helpful. We met with them several times. As a result of that is the plan you have now. They, the zoning committee and the full board review that and are satisfied that it meets the intent and the purpose of what the board and what the township wants on the street. Was there any concern expressed by the people on the board that they were trying, that this project tries to put too much, too much building and too much other activity into too small of a space? None, none. They, their main concern was the architecture of the building, which if you saw the first couple iterations, has dramatically changed. They did not opine on that. So that wasn't part of any discussion. They were they were comfortable with the spacing of the the gas station and the convenience store. Yeah, and I I, I think some of the discussions we had in their subcommittee was a lot. What the applicant has testified to is, if anything, by removing that building in the back, there's going to be more space and the ability to diverse the site's going to be easier, even though there, there may be some conflicts with the, uh, the convenience, but that's typical of these type of sites, and people tend to go to the sites at certain times where you don't have those type of conflicts. You kind of learn which sites work yeah. best. Yeah, okay. But, but to be fair to the Hamilton Street, I don't think they got too much into the site layout. I mean, their comments were mostly architectural and making and, 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 and the streetscape and things of that nature. Uh, yeah, and that's what I said. That we They didn't opine on that. Right. We had a general discussion yeah. about that at the full board where that, you know, it was a brief discussion talking about it. 
but when we got to the subcommittee, we didn't sit there and analyze it as, as Mark did and as our engineers See, did. That, that's what my concern with is I look at this, this property, I look what's, what's been done, and basically they've taken the, the, um, the lot next door, and it's now, the original building was what, 3,000 square feet, this one's all 5,000 square feet, so it's all, it's all building. And I'm concerned that there's not going to be enough space for the parking at the convenience store. Well, let, and let, also me, the let, other let me let me do point out something: is that this had a, a different approval, and the, originally the applicant wanted to have them on two separate sites. Staff specifically asked them to combine them so that the access they could have put it on a separate site. And it was our belief that the access and the way you would go into the site would be more intrusive. So while this may not be perfect, it's better than what the applicant could have done by right. Plus, it's also the other thing that I, I thought about that I didn't know about was that you can buy parking spaces. So I guess that that reduces to some extent my concern about all this. Right. In, in reality, I we could have built the convenience store on the vacant lot, not made it part of the gas station, had 85%, I'm sorry, 50% building coverage on that lot and zero parking spaces. This gives us the opportunity to, by putting the two lots together to create nine, 10, 11 spots uh, off of Hamilton Street that can be used by members of the public. Otherwise, we would have a convenience store with no parking, and then everybody would be using the parking spaces on Hamilton Street. And okay. Other, Pete, I believe I believe you also created. Well, it doesn't. There was one additional space you were able to create on the street, also. Yeah. So that that's another benefit. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you had a, a, a standalone site, that would you would have another curb cut, um, and you would honestly you would. There are four <laughs> spaces now in front of the convenience store along Hamilton Street. I'm not sure you'd have a single one because you'd have to have a curb cut at least 24 feet wide somewhere on that site, and then you have to have the clearances on either side. So you, I think all four would likely go. Which is one of the reasons why when we were meeting with the applicant, we suggested that they tie them, the two together, yeah. because right. we believe that it would have been a worse situation if they didn't do that. And we're lucky the applicant was willing to work with us. Anything else? Again, there's no public, there's no need to open. Anything you want to add? Just, just very briefly, uh, I, I do think that this application that you are looking at tonight uh, was really the result of a lot of hard work by my client's engineer, my client's architect, uh, and the owner of the property, and the township staff. We've been down here at least three or four times meeting with them and. You know, the first time I think we came in with a plan, they sort of threw us out the door and says, you know, this is really not very good. And I think what we've gotten to you tonight after working with the town and trying to get their thoughts is a plan that does make sense. It does revitalize uh, what has been a, a lot that's been empty for a lot of years. It makes it functional. Uh, it also does revitalize the, the fuel service station. Uh, by adding the two pumps, we're also dressing up the canopy, which also beautifies that area. And I think the only issue that I think Ms. Caffone really hit on all of the variances, and I think she justified them, I think the only real question uh, that the board has to, has to decide is we, we are willing to reduce the one sign down to 30 feet, and if the board would grant us that variance at 30 feet rather than 55, and would make us and, and find that the required number of parking spaces are 16 and that we would have to contribute the difference between the 11 and the 16 parking spaces and that is not a parking variance but that would be the basis of the contribution is, I it, thought, is it 16 or 17 I thought it was 17 I'm, I'm sorry 17 Se Thanks. yeah because I remember six spaces and, and yeah. suddenly it, it went to five I'm sorry it's getting late you know I'm getting, and I'm getting old <laughs> also I thought that his testimony was excellent Mr. Dominax. <laughs> okay, any more? You, you don't want me to comment on that, do you? He pulled you over the car. No, no public statements. Any, any other board comments I or questions? I just want to say, um, 
I just want to say that I, I see it as a vibrant upgrade. And uh, centrally located, it's going to be very competitive with all the other gas stations. And um, uh, I think it'll be a real attraction to the um, re renewal of the whole street, you know, all the way up and down. It's going to be great. Uh, I move that uh, we uh, grant uh, Gill Petroleum uh, the uh, variances it needs to uh, build a convenience store and revitalize the gas station located at 799 and 821 Hamilton Street in the Central Business District, subject to the following um, limitations. The sign size of the two signs on Hamilton Street will be limited to 30 square feet each. Um, the, uh, the parking space in front of the, um, uh, the recycling and garbage dumpsters will be a, an employee-only parking space. Uh, the um, uh, electronics and other mechanicals of the uh, gas pumping system will allow for the incorporation of uh, a diesel-powered electric uh, source uh, if and when there is a, um, some sort of a weather event that, uh, that creates a, uh, a lack of electricity. And um, the, uh, the, there will be six gasoline dispensers, only one of which will uh, have a diesel, ga diesel fuel uh, dispensed from it. And the number of parking spots which need to be purposed will be six. You and they'll provide additional landscaping. Landscape. Yes, and we'll provide additional landscape. Do, do you want the sign advising truckers that they are restricted, the large trucks on the site, or do you not feel that is necessary? Necessary. Okay. Yes, you do that too, yes. Second. Okay, any discussion? All the more. Laura Grauman? Yes. Bruce McCracken? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Robert Shepard? Yes. Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Before uh, we adjourn and run out, uh, one quick thing I want to make the board aware of. There was a potential resolution that you didn't get tonight on the agenda. It's been pulled back. And it involves Amanda Mandir. It will be ready it, it, for the I'm next sorry, meeting. Say that again. I didn't. I didn't understand. It will. It involves the resolution. Involves Amanda Mandir. It's been uh, necessary, I guess, for staff to add some extensive clarification to what the intent of the board was in granting different approvals to the applicant. I know you all diligently read these things. I would just propose that when you get this in your packet, take a special look at it. Make sure that the things that are involved in that resolution coincide with what you believe the intent of the board was. There have been some issues with, I guess, citation uh, violation notices issued. Uh, if you have suggestions, can they email them to you? And, we, and again, which, which ones is make sure just make sure you don't reply all because we can't have a conversation offline. Correct. If you have comments that you want to send to Christine and I on the side, you can do that. When this is on the agenda, we can have a healthy discussion. Uh, move from there. Now, if anybody has any objections, I'd like to. No, no we don't have a draft yet. You'll you'll get the draft uh, at a subsequent meeting, you know, in your packet. Oh, is, is that the one I watched on the video? All right. All in favor of adjournment? Yes. 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 yes.